about four weeks ago, I was speaking to Pastor Debbie. I said, Pastor Debbie, I would love to be able to do washing of the saints' feet. And I looked at the scripture. We're going to go to St. John 13. And it doesn't necessarily mean you literally do it. It means you serve people. But you can interpret it as you literally do it. So it depends on the church. But then, after speaking to Debbie, Sister Roxanne called me and said, Bishop, I said, yes, Sister Roxanne. She said, something just crossed my mind. I said, what's that? I was just thinking, why don't we have washing of the saints' feet? Can you see what happened? So the same time I was talking about it, is that correct, Sister Roxanne? And I said, Lord, thank you. Because sometimes if you say God said, they say, oh, God didn't say. But I'm just telling you how God works. Amen? We're going to go to St. John 13, please, verse 4. So the Bible says that Jesus riseth from the supper, and he laid aside his garment. Because Jesus was not only the high priest, but he was also a servant. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to demonstrate something for you. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, when he laid aside his garment, he took a towel. The towel that Jesus used, in the Greek, it was a lention. Say lention. A lention. This word lention, which the English translated to towel, literally means a servant's towel. A servant towel. And it's what we call a hapax legeminon, which means it only appears once in the Bible. And that's the time when Jesus took it. So the Bible said, Jesus took the towel and girded himself. Now, I want you to take note of this, brethren. It was a lentium. It was a towel that only servants would use. And after he had poured water, I'm going to pour water, he began to wash his disciples' feet. What's that all about? Well, I'm going to be teaching you today. Amen. Now, the Bible says Jesus poured water. Now, what was going on when this was happening? Pastor? As I'm washing your feet, I am declaring that I will protect you. I won't gossip about you. I will respect you. I will love you, hallelujah, and I will serve you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Isn't this beautiful? As I am washing your feet, I am declaring to you that I will protect you. I won't gossip about you. I will respect you. I will love you. I will serve you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So Jesus, who is the Lord, who is God, stooped down and washed his disciples' feet. And as I'm washing Brother Chris's feet, I'm saying, I love you. I care about you. I won't gossip about you. I won't ill-treat you in any way because you're my brother. God bless you. Okay. As I am washing your feet, I am declaring to you that I will protect you, 
I will gossip about you. I will respect you. I will love you. I will always serve you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And when he says he will always serve me, he doesn't mean worship me. He means serve me, as in help me. Amen? Just in case people misunderstand that. Praise God. Thank you. Amen? Wasn't that wonderful? So imagine Jesus then came to Thomas. What is Thomas known for? Doubting. The word Thomas, Didymus, means a twin. People think he was a twin. And he doubted. And so he came to Thomas, and I can imagine Thomas saying, you know, I'm not sure about this. Because he's a doubter. Amen? You can imagine, he came to the disciples one by one. He knew Thomas would say to his disciples, after his resurrection, unless I see the nail prints in his hand, I will not believe. But Jesus still washed his feet. Amen? Then he came to one called Judas. Who was Judas? He betrayed Christ and sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Do you think Jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed? Of course he did. But Jesus still stooped down. I'm teaching us servanthood. I'm teaching us love. He knew that Judas was going to betray him. But he still bent down, washed Judas' feet. But when he came to Peter, Peter said, Unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Why are you washing my feet, Lord? I should be washing your feet. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now. You won't understand it now, Peter. But hereafter, all the Christians to follow you will know what it's for. Amen. And I'm telling you, it's for servanthood. We are meant to serve one another we are meant to love one another peter said unto him thou shalt never wash my feet because peter was a loud mouth you know that and i'm going to be talking about personalities later because remember god saves us he doesn't save our personality are you hearing some people may be loud some people may be quiet. Some people may be in the middle. Some people may do things differently from you. But that doesn't mean there are bad people. Just means that's their personality. Are you hearing me, brethren? Amen. Because not only our personalities are different, our Christian walk is different. Everybody is at different stages in their Christian walk. Amen. So Peter says, you're not washing my feet, Jesus. Jesus said, if I don't wash thee, you will have no part with me. <laughs> then Peter said unto him, Lord Jesus, okay, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Hallelujah. Jesus said unto him, he that washeth, Needeth not save, that word save means except to wash his feet, but is clean every week. And ye are clean, but not all. Why did he say that? For he knew who should betray him. So he knew that Judas was going to betray him, but he still washed his feet. Amen. Hallelujah. So therefore he said, you are not all clean, because they were all there. But not all of them was clean. But I want you to notice, not everybody was clean, but Jesus still washed their feet. So after he had washed their feet and taken his garment, 
he set it down again and said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and lord, and you are right. You do well. I am master, and I am your lord. If then I be your master and lord, have washed your feet, now listen to this part, also ought to wash one another's feet. Now, does that mean literally? Some people say yes. Amen? It could mean literally, because that word in the Greek could literally mean do it literally like how we just did. Or it could mean follow the pattern that Jesus has done. That means you must serve one another. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. For I have given you an example. That's the word. The example means to imitate that you should do as I have done. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Verse 34 and 35. Brethren, disciples, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have loved one to another. Amen. And in Philippians 2 verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves now that word the uh, strife is the greek word which is erythia erythia and it means push yourself for position because some people because they see another person in that position, they will do anything to get into their position. Amen. So therefore, don't strive for one another. What God has given you, he has given you. Some of you are prayer warriors, pray. Some of you are singers, then sing. Some of you are exhorters, then exhort. Some of you are here to help because there are gifts of help. Then just begin to help. There are diversities of gifts, but it's the same spirit. So listen to this. The person who cleans this floor is just as important as anybody else. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The person who makes sure that the grounds is looking good. You may not see them. Do it, but they are doing a great job. Amen. I always say that when you see a beautiful tree full of fruit on it, say if you see an apple tree or a mango tree full of fruit, it looks beautiful when it's blossoming. Is that correct? Yes. Hallelujah. We love to look at the tree and we pick the fruit and we eat the fruit. But do you know the most important part of the tree? is the roots. Nobody ever sees the roots. The roots is what gets dirty. The roots is what works the hardest to suck up the minerals and the water so that the tree can grow. We don't see the roots. And sometimes everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be seen that they're doing something or they said something. The greatest people you could say, are the ones who do the work quietly and faithfully in the background. Amen? And then in Galatians 5 verse 15, Paul is teaching the Galatian brethren, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Now, I'm going to touch some parts here. Because that word bite 
is the Greek word dakno. Say dakno. Dakno. It means to literally bite and devour something. That's what it means. And if you look at the metaphor of that word dakno, listen to what it means. Listen to this very carefully. It means to cut the soul. That's what it means. To cut the soul. What does that mean? Well, the soul is the seat of your mind, will, and emotions. That's what your soul is. Amen? Because we are made up of body, soul, and spirit. You know that. Amen? The body is what we see. And sometimes the body gets sick and hurt. But thanks God, there is healing through the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And sometimes the healing takes place instantaneously. Sometimes the healing takes place over time. But there is healing. Amen. There is healing. Yes. Hallelujah. But the soul is a little bit more unique. The soul is what gives us what? Remember? It's our will. It's our mind and our emotions. That's why David said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God. Can I talk to somebody? Don't be cast down. Hope in God. Amen. Amen. So that now means to cut the soul. Amen. When... Your body is hurt. We can take a paracetamol and the pain goes away. Amen? We could even pray and God can give us healing. But when the soul is cut, it goes deep. There are probably things that people have said and done that's gone deep. And God is saying, listen. I know it's hurt. I know it's hurtful. But God says, I've shown you a pattern in washing of the saints' feet. That you love one another. Remember, God don't save personality. Personality is who you are. Amen? You know what Peter's personality was like. He never changed throughout his life. That's how he was. That doesn't make him a sinner. It's just his personality. And sometimes personalities may rub up against us and clash. But that doesn't mean you throw that person away. Sometimes people say things that they don't mean to say. And sometimes people say things that they mean to say. But that doesn't mean we should throw them away. Amen? We must love. We must love, pray for them, bring them back. Why did they wash the saints' feet? Because in Jerusalem or Israel that time, the ground was very dusty. It's a very dry place, Israel. And when they walked, they wore sandals. Some people even bare feet, but it was very dusty. So therefore, they, when they came into the house, they had a servant who would wash their feet before going into the house. Because when they ate, they used to eat sitting down. And if their feet was there, can you imagine the smelly, dusty, crusty feet? Am I telling the truth here? Yeah? Come on, let's talk the truth. Amen? Hallelujah. And it's not nice to eat by it. So they used to wash the feet. This is what I love, what God showed me. You see your feet? It's very powerful, you know. Everywhere that your head has been, your feet has been. Because your feet has to carry you there. Amen? So therefore, when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, People don't see the time when you're walking through that. People don't see the pain that you've been through. People don't see what you've experienced as a child. 
or as a young person, or as an elderly person. People don't see that. But your feet know all about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People, oh hallelujah. People don't see the, the mistakes where the feet has been. People don't see the dust, the hurt, the abuse that you've experienced. The people don't see, but your feet knows it. So Jesus says, listen, you don't know the background of somebody, but just wash their feet. Are you getting it? And God spoke to me this morning, and God said to me, tell them this. There are certain people act in a certain way because what their journey is. Come on, we need a hallelujah here. Did you know that? We don't know the journey. Some people may have gone through hell and back, but we don't know that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So they come and they say something to us, and because it clashes with our personality, we get vexed with them. And we push them to one side. But we don't know, my God, their journey. We don't know their journey. Hallelujah. Why isn't that person talking to me? Why is that person talking to me like that? Why is that person not doing this? You see, God didn't make us as clones. Every single person, oh, I love that word, is unique. Every individual is different. Every individual experienced different things. Amen? Hallelujah. But the good thing about it, you see, I'm here today because what I've been through. You are here today because of what you've been through. Did you know that? Hallelujah. Some people was on death's door. Come on, shout hallelujah. But God has brought you back. So their praise might be a little bit louder. Amen. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Some people may have been dacno. They have been heard words that has cut their soul. And they just need somebody to wash their feet. Hallelujah. They need somebody to wash their feet. You see, all of you look beautiful now. But if some of you was to tell us what you've been through, we'd be really? You've experienced what? We'd be shocked. Look where the Lord has brought you from. Look where the Lord has brought you from. So everybody, don't think it's just you. Because sometimes we can be selfish and forget that everybody goes through something. Life is like a roller coaster. Amen. Hallelujah. Up and down, up and down. But Jesus is saying, listen, I know that personality clashes with yours. One of these days I will teach her about the personality of the disciples. Did you know that Matthew was a tax collector? Do you know what a tax collector is? A tax collector was a Jewish person and he worked for the enemy. So the Romans would say, go and collect the tax from this village here. I put you in charge. And you dare not touch that person because Romans would put guards outside his house. And that tax collector, he would do some terrible things. Oh God. I can't go to some of the things that they used to do, but it was bad. Can you imagine? If there was meant to collect 10 pounds from each person, but in order for favors or for whatever, he could say, okay, I'll let you off the 10 pounds as long as I have that. Blackmail. Amen? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And he could say, well, I don't like you. So I'm not taking 10 pounds from you. I'm going to put your tax up to 20 pounds. And they couldn't argue. So tax collectors were, were one of the people who was hated by the Jews. Hallelujah. That's why when Jesus said, I'm coming, coming back to the tax collector, if anybody 
has done wrong to you, this is from Matthew 18, verse 15 to 18. If anybody has done you wrong, Jesus tells us how to do it. Watch this. If I have hurt Pastor Debbie, or Pastor Debbie's hurt me, come Pastor Debbie, I will call Pastor Debbie and say, listen, the way you spoke to me the other day was not good. I didn't like it. I was hurt. That's what the Bible says. Matthew says, if she then agrees, then what I should do is say, praise the Lord. We're back together and we hug. I'm so and we move on. Amen? However, if thy brother trespass against thee, go tell him his fault between thee and him. Listen, it didn't say go and pick up the phone and tell everybody. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. He said, just you and that person, just call that person and deal with it. If he shall hear you, then you've gained thy brother or thy sister. Verse 16. But if he will not hear you, then call how much? One or two more. Amen? Come, Reverend Julie. Come, Reverend Kwame. I like, I'm going to show you something. I have spoken to Pastor Debbie alone, and she won't accept what I'm telling her. Okay? So I'm bringing, according to what Jesus says, not the bishop or the pastor, what Jesus says, to bring two or three. So we go to Pastor Debbie. Pastor Debbie, remember I spoke to you, you hurt me, and it didn't go the way we wanted to go. So here's my two weak witnesses. Verse 17. And if she doesn't listen, but if she comes back to me and says, well, okay, I'm sorry, then I've, we've gained. And the only people who know is just us. Amen. Amen. So nobody's picked up the phone and said to, so, 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 yeah, 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 oh, yeah. We don't do that. That's not how Christian life works. Amen. Now, the Bible said, thank you, if he or she neglect to hear the one or two, then tell it unto who? The church. Now let me explain this. Now the church doesn't mean the whole church, you know. It just means the leaders of the church. Are you getting it? So then I would call the leaders of the church and say, listen, I have tried to do this biblically and it's not happening. And if he fail to hear the leaders of the church, now listen to this, let him or her be as a heathen or as a what? Publican. Amen. That's like a tax collector. And so therefore, if she comes back after that, then we'll be friends again. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. So Matthew was a tax collector. And he worked for the enemy. What was Peter? Peter was a fisherman. Fishermen had to pay taxes to the tax collector. Oh, glory, hallelujah. I can imagine when Jesus called Matthew as part of his disciples. Can you imagine how Peter felt? What him? How can he? May may not trust that man. So can you imagine Peter and Andrew were fishermen? They probably knew about Matthew. He said, we don't like Matthew. We just don't like him. We don't, he he, he did this to us. He was a robber, a thief, everything. But Jesus still called him. And then Jesus told them to wash one another's feet. So can you imagine? Can you imagine that Peter is angry with Matthew but he still had to obey Jesus wash one another's feet so now Peter what did Peter do did he 
deny Jesus three times? Three times. Do you think Jesus knew that he was going to be denied three times? Yes, but Jesus still washed his feet. Because at the end of the same chapter, John 13, the last verse there, Jesus says, Peter, and I've just washed your feet and we just took communion, but you're going to deny me three times. Peter says, no, that's not going to happen, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So this Peter who was saying, Master, I will die with you. Master, wash my whole body. You see, anybody can talk, but you've got to do. You've got to walk the walk. I will do it, Master. I will do it. Anybody can say, yes, I'll be faithful. Yes, I will do what you say. But when fire lick, when fire comes, do you, or oh, wasn't you one of Jesus' disciples? Me? No, 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 no. Peter denied Jesus three times. And that's why I say to people, let's not judge. Because if we had just judged Peter and not heard that he wept bitterly, that would have brought confusion. But we saw the both sides of it. We heard that he denied Jesus three times, but the Bible says that Peter wept bitterly. Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jesus. I didn't mean it. And sometimes that's what we do. We do wrong and we go back to God and say, God, I'm sorry. But some people will say, hmm, he's not sorry. She's not sorry. Who are we to judge? Sometimes, we was, at Solvay, we was at Shiloh yesterday, fantastic preacher. And the preacher said something that touched my heart. He says, too many of us are trying to be detective and do the Holy Ghost job. Let the Holy Ghost do his job. It's the Holy Ghost who convicts. It's the Holy Ghost who will search out. Amen? We don't need to do the work. Some of us are undercover agents. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. We're coming to church just to see what's going on. We're undercover. All we need is a Mac and a hat. Amen. We don't need to be undercover. The Holy Ghost will work it out. He will deal with it. Let the Holy Ghost deal with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Because as far as I know, this church is not Ichabod. That means the glory of God, the Holy Spirit has departed. As far as I know, the Holy Ghost is still here. And the Holy Ghost is still in control. And the Holy Ghost is still in charge. Not us. We are only carrying out what the Bible says and what the Holy Ghost says. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That when the disciples knew that Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus gave a message. Tell my disciples and Peter. Do you hear that? Tell my disciples and Peter. What does that mean? Jesus knew that he was sorry. Now, can you imagine today <laughs> if somebody had denied us three times, turned our back against us, we would say, no, we're not having this. We don't know their story. Amen? Peter must have said, what, me? Are you sure Jesus asked for me? But I denied him three times. I promised I'll die with him. I promised that he could wash my whole body so I could be a part of him. Me? Does Jesus really want me? Does he really want me? The answer is yes. Does Jesus still want you? Yes. Have you failed Jesus? Yes. Does he still want you? Yes. Will he wash your feet? Yes. Do you want the disciples and the other members to wash your feet? Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. And who did God use on the day of Pentecost? 
Peter? Why didn't he choose John, the one who loves him? Why didn't he choose, choose Philip? You know, or, or anybody else. Why, why didn't he choose them? Because God knows what's in each of our hearts. And I said to people, <laughs> you heard that some people probably did something wrong in the past. And we're picking up the heliphone, sorry, telephone. Did you miss that? Heliphone, I call it. We're not so, we're not so. We're here to wash one another's feet. And notice, who did the devil want to sift like wheat? Why wasn't it James or John? Devil wanted to catch every one of us, you know. But the devil knew that Peter had leadership qualities within him. So therefore, Jesus knew that if I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray for you, Peter, that your faith don't fail. Because Satan, the Bible says, Satan has asked. If you look up the original Greek, it says, Satan has asked for you, Peter. But I prayed for you. Amen? Be careful who you're listening to. Amen? Be careful who you're listening to. Why? Because sometimes, have you heard of something called Chinese whispers? So you start from here and you whisper in somebody's ear, I love you. I love you. Then the next one whispers, Then the next one whispers, elephant juice. And the next one whispers, the elephant is fat. That's why the whispering is a dangerous thing, you know. The Bible talks about it. Be careful of whisperers. Be careful of whisperers. So by the time the last one gets it, this one gets it as, you're as fat as an elephant. Lord have mercy. And the word was not a fat as an elephant, you know. It was, I love you. And it's misunderstood, misconstrued, and it causes division. So if you're not sure, don't open your mouth. In fact, if anybody comes to me with gossip, I ask Pastor Debbie. Pastor Debbie, I shut it down. I said, I don't know. I don't know. There's certain things we have to know. Because we're the leaders. But, you know, you have to know the difference between gossip <laughs> and what you need to know. Amen. And let me just say something. But some people use the excuse of telling when well, it's the truth. Did you know you can tell the truth and still be gossiping? Don't use that as a, don't you dare use that as an excuse. But it's true though. But don't gossip. <laughs> Leave it alone. Even if it's the truth, don't bring the gossip. And make sure you tell what you need to tell to the right people. Some people even use his prayer. Well, I'll bring a message. Come, Pastor Debbie. She's just heard something. Pastor Debbie, not even Pastor Debbie, say you, you're a normal member. Oh, do you know what? I've just come round your house just to let you know. Because I'm praying about it, you know. I'm praying about it. Yes, because this person, me here. Did that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They had nothing to do. They don't, they're not interested in praying, you know. They just want to use prayer. Oh my God, be careful how you use in prayer in God's name to gossip. Some of us say, the Lord said, and the Lord hasn't said. Be careful. Amen? There's a word in Greek called periagos. Say periagos. Periagos means busybody or gossiper. Amen? I could show you the verse. It's in Acts. What verse? Acts 19. I think it's Acts 19, verse 19. I'm going to show you. Get those two scriptures. Acts chapter 19, verse 19, please. Many of them 
also which used curious arts brought their books together and burnt them before all men and they counted the price of them and found 50,000 pieces of silver now that word curious arts means they did witchcraft are you hearing witchcraft say witchcraft by the way witchcraft can't work against us amen hallelujah so they used witchcraft but there was converted so they brought the books that word curious arts is the greek word periagos which means magic arts but it also means busybody and gossiping so do you know when you're gossiping you're doing the devil's work amen and i'll prove it to you first timothy 5 verse 13 these were not on my notes. These was on the Holy Ghost heart, which I never wrote down. Paul says to Timothy, and with all, they learn to be idle, wandering from house to house. We could say from text to text, from social media to social media. And not only idle, but tattlers. What are tattlers? People who yap, 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 yap. And also... Busy bodies. What's busy bodies? That's periagos. If you look at the Greek, it's periagos. Doing what? Speaking things which they ought not. Are you getting this, brethren? Amen. There are some busy bodies who wants to get into everybody's business. That's why it's called busy bodies. They want to know everything. What you had for breakfast this morning? What kind of socks have you got on? How many hairs you got on your head? <laughs> I'm telling the truth. Am I, am I lying? Now, God doesn't want us to be busy bodies. Let the Holy Ghost do his work. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's not bite and devour one on each other. Cut in each other's soul. Because I say something to you, it cuts you. And it hurts. And let me just say this before I go, because I won't do this just if I don't say this. And if you hear anything, don't think always the worst. And why am I saying this? Because 1 Corinthians 13 says it. 1 Corinthians 13 says it. That if we hear anything... Don't think automatically the worst. So sometimes people may say something to you and we take it on board as the gospel. And if not, amen. I'm, listen, please, please. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit led on my heart. Don't take things so personally amen pastor will tell you the amount of criticism or any bishop or any person will tell you the amount of criticism we have if we was to listen to every criticism we would not be here today and and sometimes the criticism is far from the truth sometimes you have to use criticism to make you stronger amen and I said this story before, I'm going to say it, I'm going to close. There was a little farmer who had his one little sheep. One little sheep. And the sheep fell down a deep, deep well. And the farmer tried everything, machinery, to get this sheep out of this well. And he couldn't get the sheep out of the well. So the farmer says, well, it's in the hole already. I might as well just bury it. So the farmer started to put dirt and debris on the sheep. And every dirt that fell on his back, he shook it off, trampled on it. Every dirt shook it off and trampled on it. And by the time he thought the sheep was buried long gone, the sheep pop out, meh, meh. And the moral of the story is, 
is that when people throw things at you, use it as a stepping stone to step up. Amen. Step higher. Because God has called us to higher things. I know it's dark now. It hurts, doesn't it? It hurts. Come on, we're human. And we're made up of body, soul, and spirit. It hurts. I know it hurts. But brethren, those who are on YouTube, those who are in the congregation, I'm speaking to myself as well. I know it hurts. But come on, we still have to wash each other's feet. Even though we know what they've said. We know what they've done. We know, we know, we know. But I'm going to love them. Who's been on the plane? Okay, now, do you know the plane you went on? Apparently, it was invented by the Wright brothers. They started the whole thing. What if you heard that there was bad people and they're evil? Would you say, I'm not going on that no plane? Would you say that? No, you were still on a plane. Are you hearing me? What if you heard that Graham Bell who invented the phone? Look at our phones today. That's all started from Sir Graham Bell. What if you heard that he was a bad, 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 bad man? Would you say, I'm not using the phone no more? You wouldn't say that. You bless it and you use it. <laughs> Amen. Are you hearing? Because it can be used for good and bad. But I'm using it for good. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me tell you about somebody. Moses was a murderer. We read the Old Testament and the five books. David was an adulterer and a murderer. You, you love your Psalms. Paul was a murderer and many people he put in prison and he called havoc in the church. Two thirds of the New Testament was written by Paul. Does that mean you're going to say, well, he's a bad person, I'm not going to read his book. No, that's down to you. Listen, I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying that's down to your own personal thing. Amen? Hallelujah. Because every single one of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I encourage you today. We need each other. We need each other. If somebody invented a cure for a deadly disease and there was a bad person, would you say, oh, I'm not using it? No, you would use it. You blessed it and use it. Amen. Hallelujah. So God be the glory. Amen.